Hello and welcome to The Gaggle, where we challenge and, if necessary, destroy media narratives. I'm George Samueli. With me today, of course, is uh, co-founder of The Gaggle, Peter Lavelle. And we are very fortunate uh, once again to be joined by um, a guest of ours, uh, Professor Wolfgang Streck. Um, he's a senior research associate at the Max Planck Institute and a renowned uh, scholar and uh, thinker, published uh, extensively. And obviously, we've spent quite a bit of time here at the gaggle discussing uh, the current situation in Germany. And from what one can gather, Germany is now already in the midst of a recession. And um, we have, um, uh, the, according to the opinion polls, the, uh, the alternative to Deutschland party, um, which is always you know, uh, dismissed as a far right extremist, ultra right uh, movement, uh, enjoys some 21-22% uh, support in the polls. It's the second largest party within striking distance of the Christian Democrats. It's certainly ahead of all the three coalition partners of the uh, government. And obviously, this is causing a lot of distress. Um, you know, we've read stories about that um, it's under surveillance uh, by the Bundesnachrichtendienst. It's also, or not that one, not the other one, the the the, the, fast zone, uh, the protection of the constitution. But anyway, um, the but it's uh, it's, it's under all the same. Yeah. It's all the same. <laughs> exactly. And um and and uh, there's there are people are calling for it uh, to be banned. And um, I, I would just conclude that it's very interesting, uh, particularly in light of um, what Poland has now done. Poland says, well, we're, we're, you know, we support Ukraine, but on the other hand, Polish farmers come first. How different Poland sounds from Annalena Baerbock, the German foreign minister, who seems to think that everybody's interests come before those of Germany. And that may have something to do with the rise of the alternative for Deutschland. Anyway, uh, Professor, uh, the floor is yours. You, you, know, you can take up any or, or none of those uh, points. No, no, you should, you should ask a question. And, OK, and, uh... um, all right. <laughs> right. <laughs> My question is then, um, is the alternative for Deutschland for real? Are they likely to do well? And if they do do well, um, what happens then? Do they enter a government or do they just simply uh, exist in this, uh, you know, strange nether region in which everybody's united on keeping them out of power? And what does that cause in Germany when, say, 21, 22, maybe 23 percent of the public is permanently out of uh, power? Yeah, no, you're uh, uh, basically what what I understand you're saying, and I, I agree with it, is that these are pretty wild times. Uh, there are most amazing things happening uh, and uh, unexpected things, and uh, which means that uh, making predictions is extremely difficult. Uh, the, many of the things that we've seen the last, let's say, three, three four weeks, we would not have uh, been able to, uh, to, to predict only six weeks ago. Yeah. Now, the poll that you mentioned that, that, that you mentioned needs to be differentiated. The uh, in the former East Germany, uh, the uh, the AfD has become a, a real power, and and uh, whereas in the in the former West Germany, um, it's hard to say where where they go. But one one has to one has to take into account that that there are not many good. Politicians or uh, in intellectual uh, program makers uh, in in that part. You could also say it's a pretty stupid part. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, but it, uh, it has a lot of support. So that that makes yeah, it. Yeah, no, no. I, I I was about to say that that we are talking as far as Germany as a whole is concerned. We're talking about a midterm situation. Uh, we we're, we're in the middle of 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 the uh, electoral uh, period. And the government has had a very bad time. Uh, so uh, I would not be able to predict what, what the score would be in two years at the next federal. Professor, be... in, in staying with the alternative for Deutschland, yeah. 
um, how, what's your sense? Is it is is it skin deep? The support? It's a protest vote. You know, um, uh, this is just to uh, take a a, a a a a broom and clean out Schultz and hit these people it, because people are angry and energy yeah. prices, recession, deindustrialization. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because in looking at German politics in the post-war era, there's always been, the antenna always goes up. Is this a protest vote? That's always the way it's been described. So would you put that in that category? Or are we looking at something more than that? I'm, I'm not a pollster. And, and, and uh, most of the polls are sort of asked in uh, with leading questions, so to speak. Uh, the, the, there is an, an intention behind uh, behind all this, or different intentions de depending on where you are. But but I would say, uh, if you look around Europe, there, I I always tend to to sort of uh, normalize things, and and then and then I see where it is different from what is or has become the normal. Uh, in all European countries, you have uh, parties with a more national orientation. Uh, winning votes in elections they're, they're everywhere. Uh, so Italy, uh, France, uh, but not just the southern countries. You you, you can Portugal, Spain, Spain in particular. Uh, then then go to, go to the Netherlands where you have a sort of radical uh, farmers' party suddenly. Denmark, uh, Sweden, uh, Finland, yeah. Now, now that is, seems to be the new normal. Uh, it 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 doesn't mean that it will be the same. Let's say five years from now, uh, these parties come and go, and and typically uh, they have a hard time, as it were, to uh, to to remain big if once they've become big. But I don't know. But one uh, one of the reasons that they have a hard time, I think, is that. Um, if the mainstream parties that nobody likes and nobody wants band together and say, we will yeah. never, never, never share power with them, then ultimately they they will you know, fade out. I mean, what's the point of voting for a party that never gets into party? It, it could, could go exactly in the other way, in, 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 the, in the other direction. If you, if you um, uh, try to turn them into what we used to call black sheep and... and and they are over there, and we're here. With we're, we're good. They are bad, and 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 then suddenly, you especially in Germany, you will discover that things that they say, and that sometimes correspond to the common sense of the group, uh, sector of the of the electorate, become impossible to say for the uh, for the centrist parties because then they accuse each other of. Um, Saying the same thing as as the bad outcasts, and 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 then suddenly the only the only group, the only party that speaks for those who are uh, concerned about, let's say, immigration or or what whatever, remains that particular outsider. So so this cartel strategy can sort of go in the in 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 the, in the opposite direction. And I think that is what we're seeing now. We're, we're also seeing that finally the German government is beginning to think a little more about its immigration policy uh, because uh, it, it, this is the one and only, the one most important issue uh, that feeds uh, the uh, radical right. Or the more, well, the, Professor, the, 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 it seems to me, I'm glad that you looked at the, looking at this as a pan-European phenomenon. That's yeah. absolutely right. It's very interesting. But this is a, you know, is it going too far by saying that this is a uh, systemic critique of, of the status quo and the ideology that's behind it? Because if it's happening all across, I mean, so Germany isn't a one-off, uh, Hungary isn't a one-off, okay? Now, obviously these parties are learning from each other. I would have to assume that, okay? But this is a, you know, so we could talk about, you know, the, you know maybe in five years time, this all, all change, but I don't think these the systemic problems within the European un Union are gonna go away anytime soon. Yeah, yeah, it could. Um, as as I said, I, I don't want to speculate. 
much about the future. All, all sorts of things can happen. One and a half years ago, we didn't know that there would be a war in Europe, which 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 changed a lot of things. But but I want to agree with you, and I I, I would like to say that if you if you're looking for a common denominator of what is going on in these Western European, West European, and, and then also Central European countries, then I think this is uh, a reaction to the era of uh, uh, globalization and, uh, and, and integration and the downgrading of national uh, sovereignty in a world of uh, sort of global economy and so on. And what we've learned is that uh, uh, growing numbers of people in this uh, globalized, internationalized world find themselves threatened uh, by things that they observe and, not, uh, and, and don't quite understand, or sometimes they do understand. And they are looking for some sort of uh, 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 recourse. And who, who could that be? And, and in these situations, um, the, the, the nation state, uh, you could say the democratic nation state, is the first instance that people look, look to, and, and not the European Union, not Frau von der Leyen, but, but their own government. And because these governments, they can change. And they can if, it, if I can interrupt, I'm sorry, but you yeah. know, George and I talked extensively about Maloney in, in in Italy, and you know, she her her uh, campaign platform was very clear. It frightened the uh, uh, political establishment in the West Western world. The next Mussolini is on uh, on coming our way, yeah. and as George and I have kind of quit, what happened was the the world got another Blair. Um, but so you know the. You can. You, there's this co-optation also that you know, and that's yeah, why. Sure. Again, I go back to you know how deep is this? I mean, because I guess the allure of power is far more um, attractive than ideas. Okay, and and, and that and, and then you know the for for me, I mean, not being a particularly supporter. I'm I'm an American living in Russia, so I'm I'm not going to you know critique Italian society. But you know, but if, looking at this pan-European phenomenon, this you know, the, this is a sellout. Um, uh, this isn't uh, a meaningful, and it shows the uh, overwhelming power, bureaucratic power, unelected, undemocratic power of Brussels that can disillusion people. Yeah, and and it can um, it can accept, it, it can make things worse. Absolutely. Now, Italy has an has an experience now for a number of years with participation of. Uh, uh, right-wing populist or whatever you want parties in in, in government and and they've been taking turns and the, the Lega the whatever and and now they now they have uh, the Fratelli uh, d'Italia uh, you will find they will find out that in order to have a budget that is halfway liable uh, they will need uh, uh, subsidies or whatever from from Brussels and and from the European Central Bank, and there will be strings attached to it. Uh, on 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 the other hand, um, uh, the, there is this issue of of immigration where they can um, uh, sort of turn tables and and uh, push put pressure on Germany and Northern Europe by simply letting people in. And allowing them to uh, to proceed uh, to Germany across the German border, where the Germans live in this in this strange illusion. Uh, at least the German government lives in this strange illusion that you cannot close your borders. Where, whereas an increasing number of people looks looks at places like Denmark or or whatever, and they see, lo and behold, you you can uh, close your borders, and it may make sense. Uh, yeah, then so, that, that uh, raises a question. I mean, can Germany make this intellectual transition? I mean, to say, yes, you can close your borders. And the, the bigger question, which is and what the, goes back to alternative for Deutschland, is that they're challenging German foreign policy. They're basically saying this whole Atlantis, yeah, yeah. NATO yeah, yeah. thing, America, is it's, it's leading Germany to disaster. And that that's a serious issue. And so again, 
you know, you know, the, the establishment yeah. is going to definitely try to crush that and make sure that you you don't come yeah. anywhere near power and, once you and challenge George, that. On top of that, I mean, um, up until about uh, uh, twenty months ago, um, uh, that Germany had a foreign policy of being uh, asylum friendly. Okay, that's still the case, but it would not. It would it, it, Germany would be a force for good in the world. This was the unification message, and now it's hip deep in the Ukraine quagmire. Um, so um, what, it's kind of pick and choose what what Germany wants to keep and what it wants to change. I mean, it, it, there has to be some kind of consistency here. Uh, you tell tell this to the government. You, you see, uh, the po politics. It is not necessarily consistency that is being rewarded in 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 politics, and it is not necessary. Look, look at Angela Merkel. Who, who yeah, but I mean, it, 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 going back, it, it creates disillusionment. Okay, I mean, it, yeah, what, but what let, is democracy let, let me, supposed to let produce? Me, let me remind you that Angela Merkel, the world champion in inconsistent policies, uh, okay. uh, was in power for sixteen years. Yeah. Now, uh, they, these are all so they, you. You spoke of disaster. The, I, I I try to stay away from this. I I think problems is a better word because because in this world in which we live, uh, life something uh, somehow continues whatever wh whatever happens. So so <laughs> there is no end to the story. There's only, how, how does it uh, continue? I mean, if if let's say you have this Nord Stream gas pipeline gets blown up. Yeah. Now the yeah. um. You know, because they, you can either say it was the Americans who did it, which is the most likely suspect, yeah, or yeah, yeah. you can go and agree with the Americans. The Americans say it was the Ukrainians who did it. Either yeah. way, as far as the German people are concerned, these are the, your allies. These are the people that you, you have yeah, to yeah, deal yeah. with. They blew up your pipeline. They blew up, you know, your your means of ah. making a livelihood. How can you just continue as before or we're just with our Atlanticist foreign policy? Yeah, 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 yeah. I... I um... You should you should tell this to our voters and our politicians. I'm an observer, but what I observe is that um, uh, this country. I'm a sociologist, so I look at it from from a more long term perspective. Uh, this country is not used to having an independent foreign policy. Okay, yeah? since um, the war. And uh, Germany was uh, deeply integrated into uh, the West, meaning into American foreign policy. Yeah? The United States have 30,000 troops on German soil. Uh, in addition, their, their main uh, uh, switchboard for the American military um, uh, in the Middle East is in Germany. Uh, that's that's where the, all the installations are. They have a lot of Bombs in, on German soil, uh, the exact number is not even known to the German government. Yeah. So, so uh, uh, the, in the Merkel era, the German government sometimes tried to, uh, uh, to, to do something that was not exactly online, uh, in, in line with what the Americans expected. For example, in 2008, they objected to Ukraine being uh, uh, admitted to NATO. Yeah? They didn't do this in public. They only did it because at the time the um, the French president, uh, Sarkozy, was of the same view, and Merkel and Sarkozy were, were able to sort of sabotage this. Um, no public, no education, so to speak, of the German public why this was a good idea. Yeah? Go, going back a little more publicly visible, uh, when uh, Schröder refused to march into Iran with the Germans, the the Americans really wanted German troops on them. Uh, at at that time, Chirac, president of France, also uh, sort of sided with it. Then the two together were able to say no. The Americans at the time, you may remember. Oh, yeah. And uh, French fries into uh, freedom, freedom fries, fries be, sure. because they because they found it so disgusting that that no same Libya Libya Germany um, uh, on the on the Security Council uh, uh, abstained from uh, approving the Libyan uh, uh, adventure. Yeah, there were these these moments. 
but but there was no sort of inside. But that, that was almost meaningless on abstention because I think. It, oh yeah, France I know, was... I know, but but it was the worst they they could do. Mm -hmm. as, from the and Russia did it too. Let's not forget. Right. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I I just want to say that we're we're looking back at an era of American hegemony, uh, especially in Germany. And American hegemony that they didn't want to give up because this is the center of Europe, and this is an eighty million uh, people with a lot of cash and a lot <laughs> and potentially a big army, and you want to have control over. Okay, now now uh, uh, now they are facing uh, a extremely difficult challenge. Uh, the the polls are beginning uh, to become, or, or we are beginning to become very powerful inside the European Union, and 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 they at the same time hate the Germans. So so yeah. So uh, how do you keep the European Union together? The the, the Greens in their um, sort of strange view of the world try to re-educate the polls by. Uh, um, Sending them all sorts of literature on uh, the the uh, colorful society <laughs> and diversity and and all of this and low and and surprisingly the Poles found this uh, insult. Yeah, same same with the Hungarian. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, uh, I I can observe this. Uh, you can what you can ask me is, uh, do I expect? that uh, German foreign policy or our foreign minister or uh, the Greens or whoever will learn something. And will it take for them to learn something? In a situation in which uh, the number of problems that are now converging on German policy and German politics are unbelievably uh, complex, uh, huge number. Yeah? The Americans want us to stop trading with uh, China. Uh, the uh, uh, we are no longer allowed to <laughs> to buy energy from uh, from the Russia. We we were told a year ago that our sanctions uh, against Russia would end the war within a matter of a few weeks because the Russian economy would uh, would would crash, and it would be impossible for the Russians to continue their their war in Europe. No, it didn't happen. Nobody can predict what the Americans are going to do in the next next year and a half. Will there be a new president? Who will be the president? Uh, maybe Trump is going is going to come back. What is going to happen? Nobody knows. And this country has no capacity. Professor, I think it's quite clear. I mean, obviously, um, uh, Ukraine uh, suffers greatly during this conflict. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Europe does too. And 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 you know, yeah. maybe this is kind of an apocalyptic question, but. Is can, the damage that's been wrought is it irreparable? I mean, you you're painting an, in, an amazingly depressing picture here. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. It's it's really sad. And George and I have talked about this uh, in the beginning of the conflict. Why didn't Germany just say this is nonsense? This is insane. What are we doing? You know, and reach out to the French. And you know, I think Macron could could have been flipped. I'm not sure, but I mean, that's the last time. That Germany could have stood up and had itself counted. I think those days are over now. You you can't trade with China. You can't buy Russian energy, and yeah. Germany just accepts it. Okay, I mean, yeah. I find it quite extraordinary as Germany is the pillar of the European current European order. Yeah, no, it, it is. Uh, I, I I never I never was really was was intending to say that that this is not a very very big mess. But all, all I, I'm, I'm sort of against apocalyptic predictions. Um, I've seen too many of them that that didn't um, didn't work out. So, for example, since the, the 19, early 1980s, the Economist, this wonderful British English, um, uh, uh, yeah, every ten years they they find that there's a sick man in Europe, which is called Germany. Yeah. <laughs> During those uh, during those almost fifty years of being the sick man of Europe, Germany became uh, the um, economic, the leading economic power of the European continent. Yes, yes, yes. We've always had reasons to to expect that the crash of the German economy is absolutely imminent.
Right. Well, the, the economist is, they've never liked the whole social market wirtschaft of Germany. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. They, they didn't like it, therefore they predicted it would it would collapse. Yeah. Now, yeah. I, I don't want to make that mistake. Uh, at, at the same time, I don't want to underestimate the problems that they now have. But but then, uh, this is a complex world in which all sorts of strange things can happen. So, for example, if Trump becomes uh, be, becomes president, and and he he sort of seeks a settlement with, uh, with 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 Russia, then underneath the Trumpian uh, design on China, there may be uh, things in Europe that European countries can do because the Americans have lost interest in in in, in what they could be. Uh, the, the, the key to European strategic autonomy is always the relationship between France and Germany. Up to now, these two countries have not been able to agree on um, a joint um, uh, global strategic... Um, well, well, why is it? is it? Why is it? Is it because of poor leadership? I agree with you 100%. No, no. It's it's more structural. It is... I, I, I mentioned... Uh, I, mean, I mean, nuclear... Capabilities play an important part. The, the, the Americans control uh, uh, Germany in terms of uh, their nuclear defense capacity. The French insist on the foster part, their, their own nuclear uh, uh, arms. At the same time, they are now the only uh, European Union member state that has a seat on the Security Council of the, of the United Nations. Uh, Germany always wants a seat on that council. Uh, so, uh, uh, in, interestingly, interestingly, Zelensky yesterday suggested that the Germans should 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 get such a seat. The the, the Poles were absolutely shocked. <laughs> and no, that, but then but the, but then sometimes a German politician goes to Paris, and since these people, I mean, German politicians are are are, are so much uh, naive when it comes to foreign policy. They, they will say to their French counterpart, look, we are so good friends. Why, why don't we share the seat uh, on the Security Council, turn it into a European seat, and, and all of us sort of will be... Uh... And then the French are shocked how, how someone can actually expect such a thing. Or the last... For, the last... Uh, uh, the last uh, defense secretary of the last Merkel government uh, so suggested that uh, the the foster front should be the Germans sort of pay uh, part of the costs of the foster front, which the French sort of really need, <laughs> and in exchange it should become a European foster. Front. Yeah, again, the French were absolutely flabbergasted how how someone could uh, could it, it it involves and and now I now I'm I'm going back to the structure thing. If you think about it, it involves the willingness of the French to put Paris at risk in order to save Berlin. Yeah, when it when it comes to, to nuclear bombing, and <laughs> I don't think they are, they ever going to do this. Yeah, so so then in order to have some sort of military strategy inside NATO or outside, you have to settle these issues. Uh, more importantly than, or even uh, even as, as important, there is the question of the arms industry. The, 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 the French have a sort of globally competitive arms industry. They, they want to be in the driving seat when it comes to building tanks, uh, uh, airplanes, uh, bombers, and, uh, and, and, and they want to be uh, sort of the lead, their, their companies in the lead and the Germans sort of Pay and buy for it, and so on. The, the the German thinking on these things is very different from French thinking. They like to buy uh, off the shelf, off the American shelf, and 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 they and the French always have these sort of fascinating technological designs, which the German generals feel are, are totally over <laughs> overboard and. And and they are sort of technologically impossible anyway, and 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 there are so many areas in which these two countries. But what about on the area, just on, on the case of Russia, for instance? I mean, again, yeah. you thought Germany, France, 
would have a common interest yeah, yeah. having good relations with Russia. I mean, it's on the, they yeah. share a continent. And at various times, you know, you've had de Gaulle wanted very good yeah. relations with Russia. And then we had the, the Willy Brown, Helmut Schmidt, and even to a certain extent, Helmut Kohl era. So that would be a common interest and would certainly yeah. not be in the American interest, but it would definitely be in the common interest. What happened with that? I'm absolutely with you. And uh, the, 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 the problem is uh, that uh, when it comes to the crunch, these questions of uh, defense uh, uh, strategy of a united Europe or of a tandem come up come up on the table, and and uh, also things like like energy policy, all, all of this, like new, the, the French nuclear power plants, the Germans having <laughs> given up their power plants, and 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 then and then things can be played up. When the Americans are beginning to play hardball, then uh, it turns out uh, that the German military is basically, basically trained by the United States. It's deeply penetrated uh, by NATO. The, the entire German army is integrated into NATO. That is not the case with any other army in, 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 among NATO members. Uh, our entire supply of uh, advanced weaponry um, is sort of sort of bought from and serviced by the United States, uh, and so on and so on. So you 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 should imagine deep penetrate if if the Americans, Germans and the French were ganging up against, uh, they really get nervous and they know what to do. Uh, the, Take, take the take the uh, uh, the the freedom prize episode. Yeah? Uh, after it, Germany became uh, the 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 controlling center uh, of uh, the American war uh, in uh, in Iraq. Uh, the uh, the German uh, government now uh, the American Air Force. To fly in all these uh, prisoners uh, that were to be tortured and then sent to uh, Gu Guantanamo, uh, they were all they they ended up in Rammstein. <laughs> Rammstein was the place where they were. So and and the uh, <laughs> and chief of the chancellor's office um, in in Germany at the same time uh, the um, the chief of the German secret service. A man named Steinmeier, who later became the foreign minister of of Merkel, and now is the president of the state. He had to allow for all these things to 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 happen to to come in, yeah. So, as a sort of expression of um, of uh, regret for this decision not to have boots on the on the ground in in Iraq, you understand. So so they had to express their uh, deep. Uh, this by collaborating all the more in the conduct of them. Uh, so well, you, you, just, you just used the word collaborated. Okay, that, yeah. I, I think that's really key here. Yeah, so yeah. If we could just kind of go back to the beginning of our conversation here, there are a lot of people in Germany don't want to collaborate anymore. They want to have their own foreign policy. Okay. Yeah. Foreign policy. Look, I mean, it, it doesn't take someone of your immense intelligence to understand that uh, Germany did really well for decades because it had cheap Russian energy. It's really simple, okay? Yeah. And, in, in, and since the start of the conflict in Ukraine and pressure from um, the Americans is that, you know, what was once Germany may never be again. I mean, I, yeah. I don't know, unless you get this cold fusion thing going on, I don't <laughs> see a way uh, around it here. Cold fusion with France, that would be an idea. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, you're you're you're, you're right. That, see, I don't want to downplay um, the uh, uh, the extent of the crisis. Quite to quite to the contrary, you're now the question is what what's going to what's going to happen? And 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 there, um, I, first of all, I want to say that that there are more problems there than you have pointed out. You may be aware of them. Uh, certainly, Germany needs to, or the German German uh, uh, industry, economy, also public administration, 
they need to catch up on the on the um, uh, how how, uh, how how do you say the computerization the the, the digitization thing yeah uh, we, we're we're lagging behind why are we lagging behind because because we have to buy this stuff uh, from from the, either the United States or China. Merkel had made sort of advances in the Chinese direction because this Huawei stuff was only one half of what the Americans do. But now the Americans are telling the Germans that Huawei is out and and, and will uh, slowly sort of withdraw and, and turn to the United States to uh, to um, upgrade its, um, its digitization uh, f f facility. Yeah, well, one, one of the things that I've always find very curious Obviously, you, you, you know, this this uh, elite capture that that Europe has uh, yeah. experienced um, all across the board. Uh, George and I have mockingly said you could take the prime minister from um, uh, from Belgium and ship he or she to Finland to be prime minister, and nobody would really notice. Okay, I mean because there's there the, and you said like the the German military has been completely co-opted by the Americans. Yeah, they go these they go to the Army War College, they go to West. Yeah, Florida. yeah, yeah. yeah. They, it's just this circular thing. Okay, they all yeah. know each other, obviously, and, and NATO is uh, infiltrated more in Germany than any other country. Um, um, I lost my train of thought. Um, uh, well, I think, but... I think that just, to, and this is something you have written about, which I thought was very interesting, Professor. Uh, you talk about how there's a lack of originality um, in, yeah. in Europe. Yeah, yeah, and okay, that, that, that's... Europeans just sort of adopt American yeah. social movements, American fashions. As, as but, but George, and I now remember my point, but does that make Europe competitive? Okay. I mean, it, it you know, the, 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 U.S. wants to maintain hegemonic control in Europe. That is obvious. But in the long, in the medium and longer term, is that really a benefit to the United States if uh, Europe becomes less dynamic, it becomes poorer, it becomes more less and less relevant in the world? I mean, yeah, it's a chunk of real estate, okay? But if, if you have a, 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 a politics of austerity, a, a, a politics of, of uh, lack of growth, you know, then really, is it really such a prize at, at the end of the day? That was going to be, that was my point. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, see, the, uh, my, my, my answer would be tell this to the United States Senate. Yeah. Uh, and and the, the more uh, sort of elaborate answer is this. Uh, there is a, a, say, liberal rhetoric in the United States from people that we probably uh, sympathize with who are eager to explain to the United States government that um, foregoing its immediate short-term interests may be good for them because it may uh, uh, salvage their long-term uh, uh, interests. So be nicer to the, to the Europeans and the Europeans will flourish. Then the Europeans flourish, you will also flourish and that will take place in 10 years or so. But you have to find people we are willing to, uh, to to think in these terms. Yeah, you have to go to the United States Senate and convince them. Uh, you, you could also say you could also say in the long run, the dollarization of the world economy is not such a good idea. It exposes everybody to all sorts of risks. As a result of which, let's think about some sort of uh, uh, how how do you say? Bretton Woods Mark II uh, global uh, global uh, artificial economy uh, in the uh, currency, sorry, which um, which which makes uh, the world work uh, work more smoothly. Yes, uh, but is there someone in the United States that is going to to take the risk of giving up the uh, dollar uh, empire no. No. for something else? No. Then, and you can talk to them as long as you want. You you can say it's open so it's, in the long run it's better for you and and for the Midwest and people will finally have a have industry again and they will have jobs and and they don't have to take all these drugs anymore and and so on and so on. But uh, nobody will listen. No, that's so, the interesting thing in the United States. You've got the sort of the globalists, you know, like Obama, yeah. Biden, uh, and then you've got the nationalists like Trump. 
Yeah. But on many issues, they're in agreement. I mean, like yeah. you know, Trump, as much as the globalists, would not agree to the dollar be ceasing to be the world's reserve currency. Yeah. I mean, he would yeah, fight yeah, tooth yeah, and nail yeah. for that. Uh, yeah, sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, you know, um, in terms of the, you were asking, you kept sort of asking what what is going to happen if 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 you want to to have my a bleak assessment of the future, uh, complementing my bleak assessment of the present. Yeah, then uh, these major changes do not happen by us uh, talking to some uh, powerful uh, people and then convincing them that the world would be a better place if they make a sacrifice once in a while. Yeah? These sacrifices need to be extorted. So. So things must happen. That well, I mean, so sacrifices are being made, and you're 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 making those sacrifices. It's not yeah, it, because sacrifices. they are being extorted from us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. And 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 then the question is: Are there things going on in the world that might uh, uh, open up uh, a prospect for a less hegemonic? Uh, uh, less unipolar, more multipolar uh, world order. You can call it the new world order 2.0. <laughs> what, what is going on? And then you have to look around and see, yeah, now, now the BRICS people are trying to build an international development bank that could, uh, in, the, in the medium term, establish a second global payment system uh, that is independent from the dollar. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, then the United States will have to, may come under the pressure from their own big business to, to sort of find a way uh, of uh, uh, working with this development. Yeah. Uh, these things can happen only if other things happen that guide uh, the now powerful into a more cooperative direction because they get afraid of, of uh, what happens if they don't, yeah? Yes. Typically, I would say, before that happens, uh, uh, people try the old way. So, so for example, I can imagine there are offices in Langley, Virginia, and, and in <laughs> the Pentagon, where people right now are sitting together uh, talking about uh, what can we do uh, about China. Is it possible to sort of put the Chinese into the corner and force them uh, to, to be uh, nice to us and to, to behave, to do what we tell them? And how can we do it? Or has the time come uh, to, uh, to make a concession in order to have a little more egalitarian uh, distribution of power in the world, which is safer for us as well as for them? Uh, but maybe the, You're maybe the, about the, the, the Thucydides, Thucydides yeah. trap, right. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, the answer, maybe, I think, yeah. to, to your question would be that they're probably thinking we're going to deal with China. I mean, it's oh, the idea is that we're going to first deal with Russia, yeah. crush Russia, and then we'll crush China. I mean, that I think that's the thinking at Langley and at, at the yeah. highest yeah. levels of the U.S. government. Yeah, and and what is so shocking is that in the last twenty years, they have thought so often that they go to some place and crush them and then and then everything will be and it never worked yeah, yeah. it does didn't work in afghanistan they they left a huge mess in libya they they left an incredible mess in 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 iraq then they went home they thought what's the next project it's called ukraine yeah, yeah for example for example yeah this this sort of built in irresponsibility that has something to do with the fact that nobody can get it. Yes. They're, they're, they're short of short of uh, global global nuclear uh, nuclear attacks, which probably the United States now believe that they can fend off anyway because they have all these these electronic uh, de de defenses. Well, I, I think that it's really interesting. It, it's uh, the cynicism sees no. There's no end to the cynicism here. Yeah. It seems the thinking in in Washington that is that um, uh, 
use of nuclear weapons is a possible, maybe even desirable, as long as it doesn't hit American cities. If it's Berlin, well, that's Europe, and that's Europe's problem, okay? And I think that they seriously think that, okay? I'm sure there are some people And, and they seriously yeah. think about a limited nuclear war somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And where does this kind of thinking come from? It comes from being, uh, being uh, in every, in every, I, I say, in every case, um, drunk by your, your own sense of power. It was the same in Germany. <laughs> when in, 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 they, they thought they could conquer the entire world. So, so what the hell, yeah? And, and the moment, the moment you have in people or in an institution, this feeling, that nobody can can get at us, but we can get at everybody else. Then uh, uh, all sorts of totally crazy decisions happen. So I'm 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 convinced. Looking back at the at, at this war in in in, in Ukraine, that uh, as late as in March uh, last year, uh, they were convinced that uh, the uh, economic sanctions that they imposed on Russia would end the war in a matter of a few weeks because, because the Russians would lose the capacity to conduct that war. Now it turns out that it was a complete, absolute miscalculation. Yeah, but the, and, the professor, the people that made that miscalculation are still making decisions. We haven't seen, absolutely. I mean, nobody was fired for that. It's like, you know, uh, they, the ruble didn't turn to rubble. You're fired, okay? No, these absolutely. people get more power and you can just give more money. Yeah, absolutely. And and uh, Frau von der Leyen is going to be NATO general secretary next year. She gets promoted from, from the European Union to, to NATO. Just uh, although uh, the European Union and their economic staff so so mi so absolutely miscalculated uh, the, the, the effect of these of the sanctions that they were to the to to, to these. Yeah. But yeah. but if, but Professor, I mean if you're uh, an American, you're an American government, don't you think that actually this war is not going badly for you? I mean, you're making money. I mean, the, uh, the American military industrial complex, they're making money. A lot of now bankers are making money. A lot of investment capital are making money. Hedge funds are making money. So it's a it's a nice boondoggle. They don't really they think, hey, this isn't a bad policy. This has this has worked for us. For Europe, that's a very different case. But yeah. the, the, for the Americans, yeah, I think this has been a good policy. Yeah, could be. And, and, could be. and to echo what George is saying. I know that, you know, I, George and I have discussed articles in Politico, how Europe is afraid of Trump and all that. I would just say to the Europeans, the Americans don't really care about you. I, Republican, Democrat, yeah. they don't care. You you really don't get on the radar, okay? Because yeah, yeah. Europe is subdued. It, 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 it has been uh, elite captured. I mean, it's it's really just not a very interesting story, okay? And yeah. and, and, and presume, if, if Trump were to come back, my feeling is he would say the hell with the Europeans. I'm tired of their problems. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it could could be could could be. <laughs> and if if I look at the map, I, I see the United States, big big continent. Everything is in there. You have all sorts of energy things. Everything, everything. We have two coastlines. One is a coastline to the east, where you have a sort of bridgehead on the other side, which is called Western Europe and, and NATO. And then you have a coastline to 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 the west. And you have a bridgehead, which is called Japan and, 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 and Okinawa. And, and basically, basically, all you have to do is make, make sure that these two bridgeheads uh, remain where they are. And then you're safe. The, the, the Mexicans aren't going to do anything to you because you are going to do enough to the Mexicans anyway. And, and, and the Canadians are basically the 51st state of the United States. So what? Yeah. Then, and then and then you can have very enterprising people in your planning in your planning departments who think about all sorts of nice things like let's go to Iraq let's let, let's do this let's do that and and you don't have to really worry about it because on, on your continent uh, whatever you do elsewhere nothing's going to happen yeah and that that is the problem that we have before uh, and that's and that's why they've they've basically retained that structure, that structure they created with the North yeah. Atlantic Treaty in 1949, completely yeah. different world. But the Americans have been absolutely adamant in maintaining that system. Yeah, it has to yeah. be in place 
we are number one and all our allies are yeah. subordinate to us. They do as they're told. But don't, and, don't, and all don't. of this rhetoric and all of this rhetoric, you know, the Europeans don't pay enough. No. It, it doesn't mean anything because the Americans just print money. OK, hegemony is better um, yeah. uh, than what what the Europeans are going to cough up a few billion euros more a year. No, that's just that's uh, pocket change. It's, yeah. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. yeah. The, the, see, the, the American uh, military doctrine, uh, defense doctrine, as they call it, uh, calls for the capacity of the United States to conduct two wars at the same time, one one in the East and one in the West. Yeah. And if, if you look at uh, at defense spending, you see that at, <laughs> that at least that doctrine is being taken very seriously. Uh, the, <laughs> the, the Now, American defense spending is uh, in real terms, one and a half times as high as at the highest point during the Cold War. And, and West Germany, um, Western Europe, I can, could also mention Japan as, as the other side. Now, now on the on the Pacific side of, of the American continent, what you see is that, this, that these people in China uh, sort of are, begin, are growing bigger and bigger and bigger. They, they are still not very big by in, in terms of military spending com compared to the United States. The US, I hear, have 750 military bases all, all over the world. The Chinese have three or four. Yeah, but uh, now they have a watchful eye on, uh, on, uh, on, on China. Uh, Russia, if they can sort of drag out the war in, in, in Ukraine for a number of years, then Russia will be tied down. Uh, as, as, as you know, for example, see in the Caucasus where where the uh, uh, where Indians are, are being uh, sort of driven out of Azerbaijan, the, the, the Russians used to be the traditional uh, protective power of the uh, of, of the Armenians. They no longer can do this because they are tied down in, in Ukraine, and the Turks are taking advantage of this. Turks being members members of the of, of, of NATO. All of these things sort of come, come together, you see them, and you wonder, my God, you know, what's going to happen? You, you can hope that uh, uh, some sort of uh, economic uh, uh, problem will, will rise up that will tell a, a growing sector of the American economy that the military is not everything and that you have to... Oh, no, if, if there's an economic turndown, war is the best recipe, okay? Yeah, that yeah. Is I'm afraid... I, I'm afraid uh, you're 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 right, uh, and and my hope that there will be uh, more people in the United States who uh, who will object to this sort of cure to the um, to American capitalism. That is a very faint hope, because because uh, in the same way in which sort of NATO has penetrated into the thinking of of German defense policy. Uh, the American army has penetrated into American society. Uh, the, 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 I, I remember a map that I saw a couple of years ago on, on where, uh, on the North American continent, where the bases and, and of, of the American military and the factories and everything were very much dispersed uh, on, on the continent so that each senator has a yeah. uh, sort of stake in uh, the growth of the American yeah, that's but, very well done. But Professor, just to, to conclude, we go back to yeah. where we started. How do you see the um, the next few years in Germany? Do you, you see that there'll be elections, Christian Democrats yeah. will win, and will they then form a coalition government with whom? Yeah, Social Democrats, did, did you, the Greens. You, what, what do you, what you do want you my you want my you want my sort of most um, um, most plausible uh, mm -hmm. uh, prediction? When and, we say, what's your gut say? <laughs> yeah, my my gut tell tell me this: um, the the, um, the Christian Democratic Party is still the by far biggest party in the in the German uh, party system. The Greens uh, have uh, slowly sort of moved into uh, the um, uh, the the center, and more than that, in in terms of military policy. Security policy, uh, they are firmly in the American camp. The, the same applies uh, to the Christian Democrats. 
uh, all of them. There's no there's no debate on these things in a party like Christian. So after the next election, you could think about a coalition uh, between the Greens uh, and the Christian Democrats with our famous, our, our fantastic foreign uh, minister uh, continuing in her office. Yeah. And this guy, Mertz, the former, um, the former chief of BlackRock um, uh, Germany and uh, uh, the chair of the Transatlantic Council or whatever it is called, yeah, uh, being being uh, the, uh, the chancellor. Uh, then on, on the other side, you would have the Social Democrats being excluded from uh, federal government on account of their, not, not their lack of loyalty to the, to the United States, but the, basically out of fashion. Uh, the, they represent the old industrial working class, which is dying out. And, and the young, fashionable uh, foreign minister uh, sort of looks so much better than uh, any Social Democrat can possibly hope to look. <laughs> <laughs> and, and 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 so so then uh, the social democrats will sort of suffer from the following problem position uh, together with the AfD uh, the the left party will have disappeared by that time they they will not be uh, so they will not be back in the in in, in the world. so then whenever uh, the social democratic party uh, has something to negative to say about the black green government. Uh, yeah. They will immediately hear uh, that they are now speaking the language of the AfD, and as a result, they are uh, sort of to be excluded uh, from polite political society. Yeah, that's the way uh, the, the things are. <laughs> being done. Whenever you say something that the AfD also says. You're you're sort of suspicious of being in need of being investigated. So, so you think the way. social democrats are heading towards extinction? Is that is that extinction? Extinction. You 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 believe in these things? No, but but they will not recover from. They are now at seventeen percent of or whatever. I I don't see them recover. In 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 the Netherlands and in France and in Italy, the traditional social democratic parties have already disappeared. Mm -hmm. In Denmark, they are still governing, but because, uh, but only because they have sort of shed uh, uh, most of the traditional social democratic uh, uh, values, policies, whatever. Do you think In, that the alternative for Germany, is, what is the possibility it could be banned? The, the AfD? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, that that is... Uh, you know, again, I'm I'm not marking any any. <laughs> any well, I mean, look, there's there's a, quite a bit of um, activity focused on them with law enforcement, with the judicial no, system, with the constitutional. I, I mean, it's 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 within the realm of possibility, or no, maybe no, no, a no, not, huge not, scare not, tactic. Not at this point. The, okay. Yeah, it's a scare tactic. The the reason why this is being done is to uh, make sure that anybody who joins that party or runs uh, on a ticket of that party uh, will be, um, um, uh, out, uh, how do you say? Um, Put on a list. Put on a list. Yeah, so or out the surveillance. Then, and, surveillance. And, then, and then it is, then it is. for example, if you are a, a civil servant and, yeah, and, or a teacher or, or a professor, and you 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 become a leading visible figure in that party, basically maybe even injecting some some uh, sort of practical common sense in, in, in into it. You will be seen as illoyal to the constitution. That will not immediately result in uh, in anything except that when the next promotion <laughs> is is due. Uh, you may be bypassed. Yeah. 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 Uh, so uh, uh, constructing a situation where the green, where the where the um, AfD and the SPD are both in opposition in the Bundestag is is a very very uh, painful uh, instrument, torture instrument for anyone 
so says the, something. So the Greens, you see the Greens as being permanently in government. It's like the it, it's like a little yeah, bit yeah. like the Free Democrats for decades. Yeah, yeah. They're always in government. So the Greens are now always yeah. in government. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Look, unless they make a very big mistake. They they did make a very big mistake uh, with this uh, uh, very fast sort of concept of uh, turning away from traditional uh, uh, combustion engines and and heating systems and so on that that did damage them in my view they they have two leaders one is the economics minister who is also in charge of climate policy the other is the foreign minister who is in charge of the world and and i think that if that party wants to stay in in government uh, they will sort of slowly uh, get rid of the e economics minister, concede the economic stuff to the Christian Democratic Party, and focus on being uh, the, the voice of justice uh, in international affairs, uh, pursuing a feminist so-called uh, foreign mm -hmm. policy. Oh, well, that's the, Washington's the, perfect candidate. Perfect. Absolutely, yes, and 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 it's even it's even more, uh, even more than that, because the Americans have no say in the in the International Criminal Court in in Den Haag be, because they didn't sign the, the statute. But we have, and her main policy aim is to see Putin delivered to the International Criminal Court, where he has to have. Uh, has, has to stand trial. If if you say if you say that if that is the goal, you have to first send German tanks into Moscow, <laughs> where in, in order to get the guy out. Yes, well, it, did, it didn't work out last time. So. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. But imagine, imagine this idea uh, that that you that you can sort of capture the president of a nuclear power and let him have, have him stand trial. Uh, in in an international court and 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 then in the German rhetoric, it's always like we need the second Nuremberg. Nuremberg was a was a great idea. We yeah. since we learned from Den Haag, yeah. But it's, it, it, again, it's very interesting because the Germans took this over from the Americans because back in the nineties with the ICTY when they set that up, that was the Americans who were driving it. Uh, then the Americans kind of cooled down on the idea, but now the Germans have seized on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we want these tri tribunals. You know, we want to put Putin on trial. I could not. I could not agree more. And and um, it's the same with um, these uh, uh, ex explosives. That uh, how, how how do you call them? The the little things that disperse when when, when cluster bombs. Yeah, the cluster bombs. Yeah. <laughs> now the Greens are the, the Greens are absolutely happy delivering cluster bombs to the to the Ukrainians after they have fought for 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 decades. It's uh, uh, so amazing uh, looking, you know, at our age, at the three of us here, and I remember the Green Party from the nineteen eighties. <laughs> wow, my goodness, amazing. Yeah. Well, Professor, well, yeah. Oh, God. Do, do you, have, do you want to say something? Uh, otherwise, no, I, I'll just I'll just I, wrap I, it up. I have to I have to leave for family. Okay. Uh, well, Professor, uh, once again, absolutely fascinating discussion. Uh, we covered a lot of ground and it was extremely interesting. I know our viewers will be fascinated by it. Uh, thank you again for your time, and I look forward to um, speaking again. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.